Nothing like it. Nothing like it. Nothing like God speaking to his people. I, I love that song because I told, tell the story all the time, but it's still, I, I never want to just take what God does for granted. But there was a, a person come up here, and they had some demons in them, and I told him, I said, you bow to the God that lives in me. Not me, but to the God that lives in me. Amen. They did and got delivered. And a person who was watching it by satellite, they got delivered. That's the power of God. And he lives inside of us. It's not you. It's not me. It's who lives on the inside of us. It's time for the church to wake up and start walking in what has been provided for us. Amen. Are you out there? Well, there's a fire on the inside of me. I've been studying the word, and I'll tell you what. There's just something, something's happened to me this week, and it's been good. Hallelujah. I know the Bible said that we're to have the greater works. The, Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do because I go to the Father. Now, I'm telling you, I love that because I go to the Father. He said, greater works. That means us. Somebody said, well, God doesn't do miracles anymore. I said, well, when did God die? Are you listening to me? Because it's the Father that does the work through you. Amen. Well, he's alive. He's alive. And if Jesus said we were to do the greater works, then we're to do the greater works. Hallelujah. That means what inside of me is more than what meets the eye. Hallelujah. Nothing like serving the living God. Nothing like serving. One man showed up at my house one time, not concerning me, but concerning the person that was there. And they demanded to see them. And I said, I don't know why I didn't call my husband. I didn't think to. I just knew I knew how to handle it. And I said, there's no way. There's just absolutely no way. So he stepped from behind, reached behind a, um, a tree and pulled a baseball bat. You know what I'm saying? And I thought to myself, you've got to be kidding. You really think that baseball bat can handle my God? Are you listening to me? I mean, the Spirit of God just came on me, and I said, oh, no, we don't. Are you listening to me? And I marched them all the way to their car with them swinging the bat. I'm telling you, the power of God lives in you. You just have to know that the power of God lives in you. Hallelujah. Nothing like serving the living God. Nothing like serving the living God. Well, go with me to Hebrews chapter 4. I don't know how far I get, but let's go. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God, this word right here is the word of God. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Then it says it piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Well, if you're brand new into the things of God, that really don't, you don't really understand that till just the first part. Let me read it out of the Amplified. For the word of God speaks is alive. The Word of God, come on now, the Word of God is what is alive. It means it's not a dead book. It's different than any other book that is written. God's Word is alive. Amen. It may give you history. It may give you facts. You might learn things about God, learn things about the disciples, learn things about you, your rights, your privileges. But, folks, that Word is alive. Hold it. Not only is it alive, it said it is what? It is power. It's full of power. Not a little bit. It's full of power. Now, that power means I love it in the Amplified. Making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. In other words, the Word of God is all you need. Amen. When you got the Word on the inside of you, you got a weapon that the enemy cannot stop, cannot hinder, cannot block, cannot destroy, because the Word of God is alive. Oh, hallelujah. Exodus 23, 25 says, And you shall serve the Lord your God, who shall bless thy bread and thy water. And he says, I'll take sickness away from the midst of thee. He said, There, I love this, there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Now, this is a promise to the children of Israel. Are you listening to me? In the old covenant. Now, if God showed himself as the healer in the old covenant, 
And the Bible says we have a new covenant established upon better promises, then it wouldn't be a better covenant unless healing was brought into the new covenant. In other words, I always tell people like this, if you find it in the old and you find it in the new, it's not an Old Testament truth nor a New Testament truth. It's a God truth. Amen. Amen. God is the healer. I'm telling you in this end time revival, get ready for the greatest move of God of healing that you have ever seen. Get ready for it. I'm telling you the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. Are you, I'm telling you even limbs growing. Hallelujah, nothing like God. Listen, and he says this in Exodus 15, 26. If you'll diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, do that which is right in his sight, give ears to his commandments. He says, I will put or not allow any of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am Jehovah Rapha. He said, now if you'll serve me, these diseases that I allow, God will allow what you allow, these diseases that I allowed upon the Egyptians, those that don't serve him, he said, I'll make a distinction. It won't come on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, because I'm your God, and I'm the God that heals. I'm Jehovah Rapha. That means to mend by stitching. He's not talking about healing you spiritually. He'll do that. But if you're a child of God, he'll heal you physically. He'll heal you emotionally. Nobody like our God. And that's an Old Testament promise. Are you listening to me? And God made it to over three million, come on now, children of Israel. And he said, I'll bring them forth, and there won't be not one feeble among you. I love it. He said, they're not going cast to cast before the time. That means no miscarriages. That means for the children of God, if you get pregnant, come on now, you can hold that baby till it's the right time. He also said, there shall not be any barren one among you. Oh, I like that. I've always pulled on that scripture for people because I know what heartache is. I've never experienced it to want a child. Are you following me? And, and I understand what they go through. But God's always gave this church an anointing for babies. It's always been able, you know, like it was Mertice. I said one time she was on the pulpit, and I said, oh, Mertice, you're pregnant. She said, no, Pastor. I just haven't lost my weight since the last one. I said, oh, no, there's a baby there. I said, go home and check. There's a baby. There was a baby there. God knew it. She didn't know it yet, but God knew it. I was sitting in the sanctuary, and I looked over this lady, and I said, oh, you got a baby. She said, how do you know? I've told nobody. I said, oh, but God knew. Are you, are you following me? There's nobody like God. Whatever hurts you hurts him. What breaks your heart, he's going to move and work on it. Whatever is lacking in your life, God's going to supply it. That's the kind of God we serve. He wants to show himself strong on your behalf. He wants the world to know he's God, and he's the one taking care of you. He's the one protecting you. He's the one providing for you. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Do men lie? Yes. But God's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man, I love that, that he should repent. Have they not said it, and shall he not do it? I love that. Or have they spoken, and shall he not make it good? If you get a promise of God, are you listening to me? If God gave you a promise, and it's in the word of God, God is powerful enough to bring it to pass. And he said, I'll never lie to you. If I said I'll do it, I'll do it. Amen. Hallelujah. If I said I'll do it, I'll do it. Listen to me, man can even give you a promise and want to do it, but things can happen that he can't bring it to pass. Nothing can stop God from bringing to pass any promise he ever gave you. He's God. He's not a man. You can't put him in the category of a man. He's not a man. Man is limited. God is unlimited. Hallelujah. It's time the world sees the God we serve. I'm tired of them saying, come on, our God, that the people say, he used to do that, but he don't. Excuse me, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm telling you, there's going to be a revival in this land. And the world out there will have to stand up and take notice. This is the only living God. This is the God that saves, heals, and delivers. He protects. He's God. He is what he said he is, and he'll do what he says he can do. It's time. 
And it's up to us as Christians to start walking in it. Hallelujah. And Acts 10, 34 says, he's no respecter of persons. I like John 6, 38. He said, for I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. People want to know, what is God like? Look at Jesus. Jesus said, I only say what the Father told me to say. I only do what the Father wants me to do. Are you listening to me? And people that came to Jesus, he healed them all. No, I don't think you got it. He healed them all. I've been into this nearly 45 years, and the only time, only time that God ever said, I will not heal that person. People were lined up, and I got to this person, and God said, I asked him to heal. God said, I will not heal him. And I said, well, I've never heard that before. And I told the man, I said, if God said he won't heal you, it's because, number one, I said, you're into witchcraft. He said, no, I'm not. I said, yes, you are. I said, you're into witchcraft. And I said, you didn't really come up here the right reason, the right motive or anything. And he said, he was, he admitted he was into witchcraft. He fed that statue, that idol, blood every day. And he said he got tired of feeding that statue blood, so he decided he'd quit. Well, when he decided to quit, he started bleeding internally. He went to a doctor. They couldn't help him. Are you listening to me? And so he decided to come here and try God. You ain't going to try God. You're not going to keep serving the devil and come up here. Are you listening to me? I said, sir, if you'll repent, God will heal you. Because God wants to heal. God wants to save, heal, and deliver. Well, to make a long story short, he did, and God did, and he's still serving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You said, did that really happen absolutely positively? People are here to know about it. Are you listening to me? But God is the answer. God is the answer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God's the answer. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went a fame of him throughout the region round about. Now, if this was a secret, friendly, I would have bypassed all that about demons so that you could come and leave and not know they're demons. But you know what? You go out there in the real world, they're demons. So I'm going to teach you here that you have power over them. Are you listening to me? The power of the name of Jesus makes them bow. You're in a warfare. You might as well. Come on now. Get off that little cock patch. Are you, are you following me? This cloud. You're in a warfare. Just learn who you are in God, and they'll be the ones to run. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Luke 4, 14. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. There went a fame of him throughout all the region about, and he taught in their synagogues. You need teaching being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he came regularly. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And they delivered him the book of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 61.1. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Here's what the announcement of Jesus, I believe it's the announcement that he made everywhere he went. It ought to be your announcement. Are you listening to me? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Say it. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. Recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now that's why he came. Hallelujah. And that's what he's still doing. He wants to save, heal, and deliver people. He closed the book, gave it to the ministers, just sat down, I love it, and all the eyes of them were upon him. Why was it that everybody's eyes was upon him? Just because he read Isaiah 61.1. Because for the first time, are you listening to me? In a long time, somebody picked up that book and read what they believed. They read the Word of God. When you are a child of God, the God that lives on the inside of you and the Bible that's alive, when you quote it, when you read it, you're releasing the very power of God, the anointing of God. That's why when you quote the Word, the power of God is released. 
and God begins to move and work on your behalf. And he said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do, and greater works shall he do, because I go to the Father. You know what? All that we read about that Jesus did, the Bible said you're to do greater works. So then get ready. Hallelujah. Listen, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Isaiah 53, I'm laying down a foundation of healing. Surely, I'm going to read it out of, the ampl- out of the living. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Are you listening to me? We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. The same time Jesus took, come on. Same time Jesus paid the price for your sins to be given, he paid the price with stripes on his body. Come on now, for you to be healed. The same time, it's always God's will to heal. See, the church needs to realize that God's will is his word. Whatever he said in the word is his will. People say when they pray for people, if it be thy will, that's the dumbest prayer you can pray. Because both of you got to pray the prayer of faith. And if you put, if it be thy will, then that has negated your prayer. Before you pray the prayer of faith, you got to know the will of God. And God's word is his will. If he bore stripes on his body for your healing, then it is his will to heal. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. He doesn't want you sick. He wants you well. He wants you free to serve the living God. He doesn't want any trace of the enemy being in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Nothing like serving God. Mark chapter 1, verse 40. We have a leper coming to him. And he didn't know. Lord, and he said, if thou will, you can make me clean. Jesus was moved with compassion put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. You don't find other places where it said, if it be thy will. He said he needed to know the will of God. Once he knew the will of God, are you listening to me? He knew God already could. So when he connected the will to God can and God will, are you listening to me? He received what he needed from God. People get in a heating line and they don't know it's God's will. They will not make that connection. But when you know his will, then you know he will. Hallelujah. Nothing like serving God. you got to know the will. And the Bible said immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Nothing like serving God. Deuteronomy 28. We're not going to cover that. Read Deuteronomy 28. It lists all the curses. When people don't serve God, it lists all the curses. But it ends up listing the blessings. But Galatians 3, are you ready? 13 said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for curses every man that hangeth on a tree. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Why? That the blessing of Abraham might come on us. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I love it because I can read Deuteronomy 20 and I say, Woo! That won't happen to me. Woo! That won't happen to me. Are you listening to me? Every curse I can shout. Because my Jesus took the penalty of it, and it won't come nigh me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not cursed. You're blessed. So you go over there to the blessings. Oh, and every time you read the blessings, say, that's mine. That's mine. Learn to use your Bible. Learn to read your Bible. Study your Bible. It is amazing to me that you can find some of the, I'll say, most intelligent people in the natural People of great wisdom are you in the natural. And yet they won't. This is what their whole life will be based on through all eternity. If they want a better job, they'll study the manual to learn how to do things, how to have the better job. If they're into money, they might study from stockbrokers, learning how stock does. But that will cease. Are you listening to me? Someday they're going to leave this earth. That will cease. You don't carry that to heaven with you. But in this book is the answers for a living today. And now all that will affect you throughout your whole life in every area of your life and for all eternity. 
if this is going to make the difference of life and death in my life, if this is going to make the difference of curses or blessings, if this is going to make the difference for depression or joy, if this is going to make the difference between poverty and prosperity, I think I'd study it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think I'd want to know everything about it. Are you listening to me? Because it's a lie. You can go through this life without knowing the word, but you probably will leave it quicker. But if you want your number of days to fulfill, you've got to know what God's word says and what God has promised you as a believer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, listen. John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. How many of you are a believer? A few of you. Well, you might be born again. How many of you are born again and believers? Then he said, you shall do, come on now, the works that I do shall you do also, and you're not off the hook, and greater works shall be. Come on now, because I go to my Father. So when people say, you know, miracles have ceased, excuse me, Jesus is still with the Father. And he said, based on the fact that I'm going to the Father, you not only can do the works that I do, that means heal people, deliver them. He said, but you can do the greater works. And I found out what the greater works were. I might not give it to you this Sunday. I might make you come back. But uh, glory to God, I'm one of these kind. I, I've never, even in the, in the secular world, I didn't want to just get by. And so I was the kind, whatever job they gave me, I said, do I have any time, like in between different things? I don't like to sit idle. And they said, well, you can go to this department. I went to every department and learned it. Are you listening? That's just my makeup. When I became a Christian, and I knew that didn't have a lasting effect on me, but this had a lasting effect. I wanted to know everything. My first thing was, is it always your will to heal? And I don't want to hear your story about Aunt Sally. She's not in there. I don't care about Uncle Bob. He's not in there. This is what's in there, and this is what I'm to base my belief on. Because you know what? There might be something about Aunt Sally you don't know. Are you listening to me? She is not who you're to go by. Well, I had a brother, and he died sick. That has nothing to do with the truth of God's Word. Hallelujah. And God's not obligated to cut them open to tell you anything. Their walk with God is none of your business. Are you listening? I like that about God. But this is in there. One time I was, I don't know, has anybody of you been dumb before? I read an example in the Word, and I said, you know, God, if you put more in there, I could better understand it. I don't know why I say those things except I love him and I know he loves me. He said, I put in there exactly what you needed. I said, okay, sir. <laughs> so everything in here is handpicked by God and it'll be everything you need. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Glory. I'll tell this one time a lady came to the bookstore. That was before I got fired, but came to, to the church's bookstore. And somebody came in, they said they wanted a, a reference book, you know, a deep book. Well, they said, that's right, a parallel, because I, I, you know, I love to study. So I went over there, and I said, hi, can I help you understand? You want you know, study books? And she said, I want something that goes beyond the Bible. I looked at her, and I said, honey, there's enough in there you don't do now. <laughs> I don't know why I did. I just, it just came out of my mouth. And I said, I'm fired. I'm just flat fired. I'll just fire myself and save you the trouble. Are you listening to me? Everything you need is in this book. Everything you, the way you believe should be based on this book. No other book but the Bible, because that's what we stand before God for. Amen. Well, if he says I'm to do greater works, glory to God, whatever they are, I'm going to do them. Are you that way? Whatever he says I'm going to do, I'm going to do them. Are you listening to me? If he said that you're going to do greater works than I did, I don't know what they are, but I'm going to do them. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's a challenge to me to be everything God wants me to be, to do everything God wants me. Come on now. Listen. Oh, hallelujah. This is something. Are you ready? John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you'd known me, you would have known the Father. 2 Corinthians 1.20. All the promises of God in him are yea and amen 
unto the glory of God. I always say this. I heard someone say this. Whatever somebody said, the strength of that statement depends on who said it. When you read a statement, the strength of that statement depends on who said it. Jesus said that we would do greater works. Jesus said all his promises are yea and amen. He says he is the truth. So he is strong enough, are you listening, to stand by what statement he says in the word. Hallelujah. I like that. All powerful God. Are you out there? Matthew chapter 8, 1 through 3. Here come a leper. I love it. We already read it. The other one, I'm going to read it this. Came and worshiped him. And here's how he got it. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him and said, I will be thy clean. The man said, if you will, you can. I love it. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Are you listening to me? I'm telling you the power of a touch from God Almighty. It wasn't a long prayer. Are you listening to me? He just said, I will be thou clean. And that was powerful enough to come on now to drive out leprosy and to heal the man's body. Now that's power. Oh, no, no, I don't. That is power. That one touch, one touch from God can drive out all that leprosy because it touches you out your body. Drive out that leprosy and bring healing to his body. One touch from God. What can one touch from God do to you? Change your very life. Change everything. Hallelujah. And he was clean. Listen, the centurion, in, um, the, go down to verse 5. And when Jesus was returning into Capernaum, there came a centurion beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, grievously tormented. And Jesus said, I'll come and heal him. The centurion said, Lord, you're not, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Are you listening to Speak the word only. I've heard from the throne room of God. In this great revival, are you listening to me? In this great revival, we're not going to have time for long, lengthy prayers. In this great revival, we're just going to say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Or be, are you listening to me? In this great revival, folks, there are going to be multitudes and multitudes and multitudes. And you're not going to have time to be doctor and find out where the pain is, how bad is the pain, are you listening to me, what doctor you see, in this move of God, you're going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover because they're going to be touched by Almighty God. I know it, that I know it, that I know it. That's why God's wanting you to grow up so hands don't have to be laid on you. You know, I'm just, I'm just transparent. and That's just the way I am. But, you know, on Facebook the other day, somebody said, I've got a headache. Will y'all all pray for me? Now, I didn't know her, but I thought to myself, I, wanna, I wanted to go back and say, no. If you've been a Christian long, you ought to know how to pray for yourself. <laughs> I did, but I didn't do it. I refrained myself because I'm connected to the C Church. But if it had been one of y'all, I'd have got you and said, can't you by now? Can't you by now? I mean, we're to pray for you when you're sick and you've you tried to receive healing or if you're a babe. But folks, if you can't get rid of headache, how in the world are you going to handle anything else? I'm not interested in winning friends. I'm interested in helping you. Amen. Helping you. Learn how to believe God. Hallelujah. Some, you know, we had somebody come up every Sunday, and I, thought, I went to her, and I said, you know what? We're probably tired of laying hands on you because you can't live like the devil during the week and come here and expect everything to be all right on Sunday. Why don't you start living right, and then you won't have to come every Sunday? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Because that's the truth. This isn't play games. This is a party time. This is an impartation from God Almighty. Pastor Lisa, you can correct everything next week, but right now it's me. Just next week, say it's her. She's old, whatever you want to, but I'm really young. Hallelujah. He said, but speak the word only. Jesus said, I haven't found such great faith. And then he said, as thou hast believed, so be it unto thee. Are you listening to me? The man got healed by God. I said, we don't want to hear by your faith, according to your faith. But folks, according to your faith, that's why you got to study faith to learn how to believe your God. Miracle-working God. Awesome God that we serve. 
Hallelujah. You ought to realize more powerful than any demon. Hallelujah. Nothing like your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, Matthew chapter 8, verse 14. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, I have to bring this out because of Kippy. Very important. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother, which was his mother-in-law. <laughs> Sick of the fever. He cared about her. She mattered to him. She just had a fever, but he cared about her. She mattered to him. And Peter just touched her hand, and the fever left her. Now forget the other part, and she arose and ministered unto them. I'm not doing that. I'm not cooking no meal. I'm not cleaning your house. But she felt like it. Are you listening to me? He touched your hand. No, no. He just touched your hand. He just touched your hand. And the power of God flowed through him was so powerful that fever had to leave. He didn't say, I rebuke you, fever. He didn't say, fever, leave. He didn't say, he didn't come. He touched your hand. I want you to know there's enough power of God that lives on the inside of you that if you touch people, they'll be felt. Come on. God Almighty will show up. God Almighty. It's not your eloquency in prayer. Come on now. I'm doing the words. Of my, come on now. Painting a picture. It is the power of God. I prayed for somebody one time. I, I don't know what. I, I went over there and they, they told me, they probably told me the right thing, but I didn't pay a whole bunch of attention. They just needed healing. So I went over there and prayed for a tumor. And then when I got through, the lady said, he doesn't have a tumor. It's leukemia. Do you want to pray again? I said, no, I'm not going to pray again. Are you listening to me? I said, he got it. God did it. God knew what the boy needed. Are you listening to me? I knew the power of God is not your words. It's releasing the power of God. And the same God that would have healed a tumor will heal that leukemia. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, I got to get you to realize the God that you serve. I got to get you to realize the God that you serve that lives in you and flows out of you. You're the vessel that he's chosen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And when the evening was come, verse 16, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out spirits with his word and healed all that was sick. He just cast out spirits with his word and healed all that, all that were sick. All that were sick. Are you listening to me? With his word. He didn't wrestle with it. He cast it out. Are you listening to me? People say, well, is it a spirit or is it sickness? What does it matter? They have to respond to the word. Don't get hung up on that. Are you listening to me? It's the name of Jesus that releases healing to deliver and to heal. Amen. Hallelujah. And he lives in you and he lives in me. That's a mystery. That's amazing, isn't it? That's amazing when you think about it. God lives in you. God lives in you. And the same miracles that you see Jesus doing, oh, my time. I can't see back there. <laughs> Hallelujah. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. You know why God heals? Listen to me. Because he's fulfilling that scripture. So when you lay hands on people, realize the Lord wants an opportunity to fulfill that scripture in that person's life. You're just a vessel. You're just a conduit. God wants to heal them. God wants to deliver them. And you're a vessel that he can flow through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm going faster. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Luke 5:15. Luke 6, 17, you find out that there was great fame of him, but listen to me, the people came to hear and be healed. They came to hear and be healed because faith comes by hearing. Romans 10, 17, come on, faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. 
You need faith. You need to be able to hear the word. And if you get into the word, your hearing will increase. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's faith. Are you listening to me? There's nothing like serving God. But they knew they needed to hear in order not just to receive healing, but to keep it. Catherine Kuhlman said, as great as the gifts of the healing operated in her ministry, she said, too many people lost it. Benny Hinn said the same thing. And then God showed them they need to teach the people how to receive and how to keep what God gives them. Even though it gives them the spirit release healing, they needed faith to know how to keep it. So when the enemy tried to return, they said, hey, sucker, no way. No way. I've already been healed. You have no place in my life. Are you listening to me? Serving the living God is the most wonderful thing in the world. I've always wanted, I love mysteries. I, I, I don't like them long drawn out, but I like mysteries. And, and when I get into the word of God, it's always like a mystery. Are you following me? It's always there's something in there that I didn't get before that I can get this time. It's amazing. It's a revelation of my God. I love it. I love it. I love it. I say, Father, show me you today. Let me see something about you that I did not know. I breathe your breath of life onto the word. I think being a child of God is absolutely wonderful. I think it's amazing. I think it's adventurous. You always know God's going to take care of you. Oh, nothing like serving the living God. Nothing like serving the living God. I, I, I was, uh, I'm going to be teaching later a series on angels, but I remember I, w I was out when I lived in Wilmington Island to Lehi Island. I was out walking, and I just got carried away, didn't pay attention. And all at once, it was dark, and I thought, oh, this is not good. I'm walking by myself, and this, you know, not, not a lot of homes in that area that were way off the road. And I said, God, this is not good. Here come a car with three guys in the in van. It's a van. And they went by me, and I thought, I don't feel good. I don't feel comfortable. Something's not right. I began to pray, and they come back around and had opened the side van. Well, that really gives your antennas up. I said, God, I know I do need a miracle. I thank you, God, that you give angels charge over me to protect me. I thank you, God, for angels being stationed around me. Are you listening to me? And all at once, here they're coming down the road, and I'm just thanking God and praising. Here comes three large dogs that I had never seen before, and they came and did like this, one here, one here, one here. Are you listening to me? Never saw those dogs before. That band shut that door, and off they went. These three dogs walked me all the way home, up my driveway to my front door and sat by my front door. You can say what you want, but I'm going to tell you what, I never saw those dogs again. God is an awesome God, and he says, I'll give his cha angels charge over you. Oh, does that whet your appetite to hear when I teach on angels? Hallelujah. They came to hear. And they, even those were vexed with evil spirits. And I got to quit, don't I? Even those I do, because even those vexed with evil spirits, I'm debating whether to give you something, but I don't think I will. I didn't give it to the first class. Peter and John. You find Peter and John walking in the same. Peter said, we know when they were going to the temple, he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. He knew what he had. Yeah. He knew what he had. You need to know what you got. Yeah. Such as I have given by thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. See, if you'd have given the man money, that would have just taken care of the need for the day. But the real need, he needed healing. Yeah. 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 Silver and gold have I none. That didn't mean he was poor. That just means he didn't have it on him. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give by thee. He's, he's nobody special. He's a believer. That made him special. But he said, the works that I do shall you do in even greater works because I go to my Father. You define the disciples doing the same works that Jesus did. You find Philip when he went to Samaria. Man, mighty signs and wonders and miracles followed him. He was an evangelist. They followed him. Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these because I go to my Father. We have an advantage. He's gone to the Father. 
That means there should be an increase. <clears throat> that means there's going to be something that we as believers do that we don't find in the ministry of Jesus. <clears throat> Get happy and I might give you the rest. Are you ready for it? You can brag to the first class. You don't find anywhere. Well, do what? Well, go ahead. Maybe you can preach better than I can. That was me, by the way, in case you don't know. I did know that. When you study Jesus and all the miracles that he did, you find that people wanted to touch his garment, but you find no record of them taking handkerchiefs or aprons and Jesus praying over them and them taking them out to the sick and getting the sick healed or delivered. Hallelujah. That was a new thing. Would you like to know the second thing? That's why I find the word so interesting. He said, the works that I do shall you do also. And greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. You don't find anywhere in the ministry of Jesus where just his shadow healed somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you do with Peter. You do with Peter. The Bible said that just his shadow people got healed. He didn't have to speak it. He didn't have to lay hands on them. His shadow, because of the presence of God in him, his shadow released healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's talking about you. He's talking about you. He's talking about you. He's talking about me. We're living. Who, what else is going to happen? The Bible said God wrote special miracles by the hands of Paul. And you look it up in the Greek, it means creative miracles. You know what that means? A man that didn't have a leg got a leg. That means God of the creation began to work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you're the dispensation that he's going to show himself strong on and use. Hallelujah. You're the one. These signs shall follow them that believe. Them that believe. You have to be taught how to believe your God. Faith, come on, is the substance things of hope for the evidence of things not seen. You have to learn what faith is and learn how to operate in it. But the first thing is to know who your God is and that he lives in you. God lives in you. Isn't that amazing? And you're part of the end time harvest where the greatest move of God and the greatest signs of God that have ever been, come on, ever been on the face of this earth is now. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I like to watch some things from Africa, from, from Africa, from Nigeria, because when they do an altar call, they, I mean, they've half, just uh, more than half this church is room for people for the altar. And that man says, all right, I'm going to just give you a little bit of time. Come forward. And they're running. They're running to get there. And he'll go 10 Nine, eight, because so, you've got to run quickly. Are you following me? So that there's so many running all over the whole place. And here we say, ten, nine. <laughs> A courtesy come up, please. Are you, are you following me? But no more. But no more. Your sons and your daughters, your family will come in. They will come in. The greatest move of God. Pastor Lisa, come do whatever you can do with this crowd. Hallelujah. She'll be here next week. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Everything will be safe next week. Hallelujah. Come on, stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's late, but we're going to do that song one more time. And now after everything that she's just taught you, you better sing it with more emphasis than you've ever sang it before, more mm, than you've ever sang it before. Think about it. 
the same power. Say it, the same power. Same power. That rose Jesus from the dead. That rose, rose Jesus, Jesus from, from the dead. Lives in me. Lives in, in me. me. Man, how can we think there's nothing that's impossible? Come on, everything is possible because of him. He lives on the inside of us. Yes. Right. That's one of my favorite scriptures. Every time the enemy tries to put fear on me, I just think, ah, oh, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in me. Amen. So we're going to sing it again. Y'all better get excited and start proclaiming some things. Amen.